Hello, I'm Larry Colmas, the official voice of the Kentucky Derby and Racing's Triple Crown. On today's show, we have superstar chef Bobby Flay teaching us a thing or two about his special mint juleps and a couple of surprises in store you're not going to want to miss. The show is set, Kay Adams is firing out of the gate, and we're off to the races up in Adams. Churchill Downs, the majesty of it all. We are starting it big. I'm standing next to an absolute legend and Mike Tirico. How are you? Up in Adams. Hi, Kay. Hey. How are you? I'm so it's excited. Good to see you. It's been forever. It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous here today. Is it the best? The race is already happening. Yeah, one race already early. Is this your first time here? First time here. This is, uh, it's bucket list for a lot of people and yeah. hopefully you'll get the whole bucket list experience. Give me the thing weekend. that I need to notch off the bucket list here. <sighs> you know, you need to survive the weekend. A lot That's of rookies. A lot of rookies don't know how to pace themselves. Yeah, I went to college, so it's okay. <laughs> but but it was it was a minute ago. Not a, a lot of minutes, but it was a minute ago. So like people get here Thursday and they get so excited, and yeah. then Friday there's the races and the Oaks for the Phillies, and then Saturday's the Derby, and then there's Friday night, of course. And by Saturday mid afternoon, there's like a little. Am I going to yeah. make it all the way through? Nappy so time. Pace yourself. Okay. Pace yourself and hydrate. Now, people always say the Derby is such a great party. I have no idea. I've sat at that <laughs> desk for seven years. I've been on TV for six, yes. seven hours. So. so, and you'll be doing that tomorrow all yes. over NBC. What are you most looking forward to? I want to ask you about Forte. Yeah. I met the horse. I met the horse's owner yesterday. I was looking at Pletcher. Well, hey. I'm hearing some rumblings by the old water trough about him. What's going on with Forte? How are yeah, you feeling about it? Yeah, I know. Him? Well, the good news was Friday he came out and looked okay. So, uh, there have always been rumors around Derby horses. Yeah. That's one of, the, one of the odd traditions of the Derby. Like, what's going on with the favorite? Who knows? Uh, we'll never know, right? We can't talk to the horses and get the answers. Like in football, we yeah. can talk to the players. And Todd Pletcher is one of my favorites. A big Dallas Cowboys fan, by the way. <laughs> uh, Todd is one of my favorite trainers. He is meticulous. He does such a good job. He's prepared more horses for the Kentucky Derby than any trainer in the history of the sport. Always has good ones. And this may be the best crop that he's had. And he met Mike Rapoli. So I need to. I mean, what now, a stud he is. I'm Mike. I grew up in Queens. Oh, perfect. He is Mike from Queens. He won the Belmont. How exciting for him. He's a, he's a yeah. We have a lot of Mike from Queens moments. He grew up a Mets fan. I love Rapoli. His energy and passion is what this sport needs. He's young. He's an aggressive businessman. This is a sport that could use people like Mike and their vision to help take the sport to the next level that it needs to get And his to. partner in ownership, of course, is the Vinny. owner of the Panthers who took care of the Bruins, which he was a New York kid must love. And Vinny Viola yeah. is up to, oh, his Panthers team on Toronto. So I know. Vinny, Vinny's on a hot roll, so he hopes he can keep that going. I can't believe you know everything that's going I had to look that up. Who are they playing? The Maple Leafs, you are all <laughs> over it, of course. Uh, and I want to ask you a little bit about the NFL. Yeah. We'll get into that. Sure. Talk to Aaron Rodgers. He's here somewhere. He's yeah. showing up bright and early to be here with his boys. We're excited about that. Take me into those production meetings with Aaron Rodgers last year because he looks like a completely different man at this point. I think those production meetings will be very different next year. It was over in Green Bay, but he wasn't done. And I think he's found something new. And I, I think he's going to be juiced by New York. You know, that whole New York experience can overwhelm someone. But I think Aaron has lived a lot of his career, even though in the smallest market in the league, he's lived a lot of it on page six. And he knows what's coming. He loves it. He's, he's so smart. He's so intelligent. Like, he wants people to ask him these questions so he can share. Um, I think it's going to be a great fit. Remember, the Jets were terrific. Robert Sala is an excellent coach. The defense was good. I love the skill positions with Wilson. Brees Hall comes back. Aaron's still got it. And as you know, a motivated Aaron Rodgers is a great football player. I know he's 40. I know some people have questions. I think they're going to have a great year in a conference that is so stacked. All these AFC games are yeah. going to matter so much. I think it's going to be great TV right from the start. I know it so well that I'm celebrating the fact that he's out of the NFC North <laughs> know, right. very much as a Chicago Bears person. And living in Michigan? Yeah. That was the, it was a happy day for Chicago. It was the one day that Bears and Vikings and Lions fans all got along because the <laughs> Packers, for the first time in 30 years, aren't trotting out a Hall of Fame quarterback. Now, you're holding this mic flag. Chris Collinsworth joins me on my show pretty often. He's a oh, kind boy. of a regular. Yeah, and yeah. I've learned a lot about him this year. Last time I talked to him, he told me about how his – wife wants him to get rid of jeans that he's owned since 1991 and That's we're Holly. debating that <laughs> yes yeah, so, so i learned about holly i'm learning about chris with a full year with him now yeah. traveling what have you learned about uh chris collinsworth we both do this tv thing and we've done it for a, a few years me longer than you um it's it's great it's a great job but it's work what i love and admire about chris is he still loves the grunt work you know, Chris hasn't played a game in the NFL in a long time. 
But he's as current as anybody you ever hear on TV. It's because he works. He puts in the hours. And I admire that and appreciate that. And he made me so much better just in one year of working every game with him. I've known him for years. Uh, we've been friends. We've got to do some games. But to do week in, week out, text, talk, hang out, do games was, uh, was such a joy. What's he like to travel with, though? Like, have you learned anything funny about him? Um... Yeah, you know, he's not the most computer sad. He's on computers a lot, <laughs> but there's always a minute he's like, this doesn't work. Why isn't this working? What's going on? I can see that. He's he's apt to maybe spill some food on himself at times. Wow. Those, wow. You know, wow. Those, kind, those kind of things, you know. So you always want to make sure pregame that Chris is you know, not eating in the tie and shirt that he's going to do the game. Shout out to the wardrobe that, over at NBC Sports that doing their kind thing. Of stuff, but he is uh, the best. He's a prince. He and his wife, Holly, and working with Jack, too, yeah. is so cool. So uh, lucky to have... You know, what's the great thing about this business? It's great people. And uh, it makes it okay to be away from your family for long stretches. And to hang with those guys for 21 weeks a year is pretty damn cool. We were having a production call. And we're like, what does anybody want to know from Mike Tirico? It's a small, lean group. You're seeing all of them in front of you right now. They're all good looking. Everybody's in pink for the derby. Yes, what has he not done? He's done it all. You're talking hockey to me. You do the Sunday night gig. You've done. What is one thing that's still out there for Mike Tirico? Whether it's announcing I, yeah, or play-by-play? Play I, I, I guess it's calling a Super Bowl. You know, I had the great opportunity to do something that, you know, thanks to people at NBC, I, you know, I'll, I'll never do again. I don't know if anybody will. I got to host the Super Bowl pregame and the primetime Olympic show on the same day uh, last year in Los Angeles as they were both going on. It was, uh, it was one, of those, one of those days, like February 13th is going to live with me forever because that was such a special day of uh, 2022. But, no, I think all of us who do play-by-play play in the NFL dream of calling a Super Bowl, and I've been to a whole bunch of them, about 25, hosted this pregame show, been on other pregames, but uh, I think the chance to call a Super Bowl, hopefully in the next couple of years, that will be the the one that I am looking forward to as much as anything. No WWE for you're not taking a page out of McAfee's book, no pickleball, that's I am huge not now going off in the suburbs. Top, not going off the top no, rope. No, I'd like to see it, though, and I think I'm, the world would as well. I'm an acceptable dinker in pickleball. I don't know what's a dinker. Like you can't go in the kitchen. You got to be careful. Okay. You don't. You don't play pickleball. No. You need I'm to. Not, really? Okay. You need to. You got to have good volley skills. It's not tennis. You're not tennis instincts, but you know. But I'm. I'm a pickleball injury waiting to happen. Okay, great. But I'm, so I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm trying. So <laughs> enjoy it. Whoever wins a favorite. If it's a fun thing like Rich Strike yesterday, a long shot. Yeah. It's always exciting. And you'll have what two minutes of reprieve to maybe get some water. I don't even know seven what you hour, do. Seven hours of TV. I don't have to do all of them. Ahmed Free does the first three, but we're seven hours of TV with 15 minutes of action. So we get to talk a lot, but we got a ton of people. It's like the E-Red Carpet Show meets the Today Show meets a heavy handicapping horse race like FanDuel TV does on a regular basis. So it's all those things mashed into one TV show. That's fun. So here we are. Let's do it. You're the absolute best, and I would not be remiss to tell you, I don't know if you know this, I know you're an Emmy winner, but your Emmy nominations this year, you're the only one in the field to be nominated for play-by-play and best studio host. So very exciting and rare. Thank you. Lucky to work with great people. So I have good friends like you. (laughs) You're the best. Thank you, Mike. Here we go. We'll be back with Bobby Flay, and I'm going to go stalk and find Aaron Rodgers. Up and out of the Derby. Bobby Flay, are you uh, ever try to be a sports announcer? A sports announcer? Yeah, why don't you no. Give us a little, oh, we're here at the. Oh, here we are at uh, beautiful Churchill Downs. Yeah. It's Oaks Day, getting ready for some spectacular horses and some hey, spectacular bourbon. That's a spectacular bourbon yes. and some blackberry mint juleps coming up. This is, of course, renowned entrepreneur, restaurateur. Uh, Bobby Flay, what don't you do? You own a horse, too. Yes, I do. A couple. I have a couple of horses, for sure. Yeah. I love it. I, I've, been, I've been interested in this. Uh, in this sport, in this business, whatever you want to call it, for a really long time. Since my, my grandfather took me to Saratoga Springs when I was about 16 years old. Yeah. And I just fell in love with it. And then now you sort of are living that on with Sophie, your daughter, right? She was at the Belmont with you. I did my homework, Bobby. Yes. Sophie is, uh, she's kind of in your business. She's, she's a news mm-hmm. reporter for ABC out in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, she, of course, you know, loves the horses as well. It's, uh, it's a great way to be, to, uh, the ho- the, these horses can take you anywhere in the world to really fun events like this. I heard that you like the Oaks better than the Derby. Now, I didn't even know the Oaks existed. <laughs> I thought no one was going to be Do you be know the today. difference? No. Uh, I'm going to oh, tell the you. Phillies and the... Yeah, the, the Phillies and the, the boys and the girls. And the boys and the girls, Right, yeah. so today it's, it's Ladies' Day. That's why everybody's dressed in it's pink. It's a run for, for the lilies. Exactly. Now, just and, so I support breast cancer awareness. I was just not informed. Yes. So everyone, I'm... I'm 
I, I must look at my crew did not tell me. I did not right. get the memo. I'm going to give you my pink tie I, for the rest of the day. At some point after these mint juleps, I'm sure that'll happen, Bobby. <laughs> okay, Here cool. we go. We're on the show. We're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Talk to me about what you're most excited about this weekend at this derby, the 149th. Well, I mean, I think it's obviously the, the Oaks and the Derby are very, very exciting. Um, you know, every year we have, you know, new three-year-olds, Phillies and Colts. And um, listen, I just like, I also like the, the whole party of it all. I like getting dressed up for these events. I like socializing. I like drinking bourbon. I like Kentucky food. I mean, to me, the horses are obviously incredibly important, but they're a great excuse to have a great time. You got into this, but it's, you know, you're a, you're a chef. There's a lot of uh, old guard, a lot of bajillionaires. Was it a warm welcome? What has been challenging about that? Well, I've been I've been involved in this business for a long time. Got I've it. been on boards of like the Breeders' Cup and New York Racing Association and things like that over over the course of my uh, my time in, in this business. I don't do that anymore because I just really want to enjoy it. Okay. But listen, I think that you know there's been some great progressive changes in, in some regard, but we need more. We need more, and we need people. Uh, like I was watching you with Ken Rudolph the other day. You're like, who do I bet? Yeah. And instead of asking him, I'd rather you be able to decide who to bet on. We ha- we need to make it easier for people to understand the racing form and and uh, and you know and how this all works. And what, so, what would you change if you could change anything? Like NFL, that's my world. They got rid of penalties for touchdowns two years ago. They're making it more fun. Like, what would you change about? I, I think the, I think the first thing that needs to be changed is understanding how to bet. Right. Okay. I mean, and, and literally, I, think, I still don't know. I still I, don't know. I know. So there's so the so the the, the most well known thing is something called the daily racing form. If I handed it to you right now, it'd be like looking at hieroglyphics. Yeah. No thanks. But there's 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 something else called the thoroughgraph where they just put one number on each race for each horse. So the lower the number, the faster the horse. You could literally decide who you want to bet on in about. 45 seconds. Wow. And that would, that to me, if, if we made that more readily available to people across the board, it would make people a lot, it, they, they, they just want to bet more, you yeah. know, and they'd be more interested in it because they'd understand it. Well, FanDuel has, is the only sports book that has it in its sports book. And so it's nice and easy. Anybody at home, anybody, I'm too intimidated to go mess with these windows here. Really? Oh, I'd be like, can I have some French fries? Like, I don't know what I would say. I literally, <laughs> I'd be like, ma'am, go sit down. Uh, that wouldn't work out that well. So, so we're going to make, go ahead. Oh, you have a question for me, Bobby. I do have go a question. Ahead, yeah. do, you, do you have a, a horse that you want to bet on in the Oaks of the Listen, Derby? I met that, I met that uh, real charming uh, owner yesterday of uh, Forte. But oh, now I'm Michael hearing, Poli? Yeah, he's yeah. great. But I'm hearing rumblings by the old water trough back there that maybe something's going on with him. But then, well, I, but then people are saying not to, Mike Don't Tirico, start the, ru- don't Mike start the rumors. Mike told me it's like a tradition of the Derby that there's rumors. There's always, I don't like that. There's rumors on every single horse. Yeah. And don't believe anything until they announce it. But I like reincarnate just because I like John Velasco. Oh, that's not a that's not a that's not a good face. No. That is not a good face. Oh no, why? Let Fifty me, to one odds. I like an underdog. I know. Let me tell you something. There's a, there's actually a viral video from last year. Okay. When I was on the red carpet last yeah. year, I picked up they these two lovely ladies. Interesting that you me, think that we don't know that oh, about you. You know about this? We're gonna do this again. Are you gonna do this again? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, what do you mean? Do you not believe in uh, superstitions oh, or just traditions, rituals? Unbelievable. So Come I don't on. even You're have to tell chef, the story. You're a you be like an athlete. So you were on the red carpet. They made you pick a name out of a hat for whoever, I don't know who did it. And you picked out Rich, Rich Strike. Strike. And yes. you were like, this horse is not winning. I was like, this, there is no, this horse is not winning. And literally the horse won. So we're going to pick the horse and you're also going to say, and so will I, this horse is not winning. Well, let me see who I pick first. Okay. Well, no, not I that think, it matters. I like, I know what I'm do doing. Okay. Dun, da, 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 oh, da, da. I actually like this horse a little bit. Verifying. Okay, no, that's not the game. You have to say this horse. This horse is not winning. It's not winning. But the he could derby. win. He could win. I like verifying. All right, I'm going to pick. Let's see who's next. This Actually, this is, this is the son of Justify, who won the Triple Crown. Is that true? Yes, it is. Amazing. Okay, oh, no, I don't want that one. Ah, hold on. No, I don't want that Jimmy, one either. Jimmy, I'm verifying. I don't want the. Oh, I'll take this one for Ken Rudolph. Kings Barnes. Oh, Kings Barnes. I like that yes, horse too. Yes, for the Sacramento Kings and the Barnes something, I remember. This horse okay. is going to have the lead no, at the top of the stretch. No, stop saying that. I'm not saying he's going to win. Tell them it's not going to This horse, this horse is, not is not going winning. to win this horse the is Kentucky not winning. Derby. What do, I mean, do you have any superstitions at all? Uh, Not really. Hey, tell me this. What's the best meal you've had in 2023? You know what? I had an amazing meal last night. I'm not kidding. Okay, but the best meal. Tw- no, take, it, take it easy there. It, it's probably the best meal I've had this year in 23. Where? We're only in May. Uh, it's called Barn Eight. 
Okay. It's right outside of Louisville. Oh my gosh, in, I have in, to go. In Goshen, uh, Kentucky. It's an old uh, horse farm that they, they took a barn and they made it this spectacular restaurant. It's so cool. Okay. I'm telling you, it's really cool. Do you own this restaurant? No, of course not. Well, how do we get a Bobby's Burgers in here? You want a Bobby's Burgers? Hell yeah. At Churchill Downs? I, listen, I love Churchill Downs, but I had some uh, s- sus chicken strips <laughs> yesterday. I would have loved a Bobby's Burger. It's all, all right, we'll make that. We'll, 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 we'll talk to uh, Churchill Downs. Congratulations on the all the vacancy stuff you got going on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, opening another restaurant. In December, uh, you have to come to Amalfi. That's my new restaurant. Where's that? It's in Caesar's Palace. In now Las I'm Vegas. going to Italy. Give me your best food recommendation. Where are you going? All, just give me the, the like. The Amalfi Coast. Aliens come down and they say, "Flay, take Done. me to a restaurant." Done deal. Amalfi Coast. Okay. A small town called Nerano. There's a restaurant called Lo Scolio. No Scolio. Lo Scolio. Okay. It means the rock. Amazing. Um, very hard to get a reservation. You sit right on the Tyranny Sea. Right. But I will. So I say, I'll I, make know, a I know Bobby Flay. No, no, I'll have to make a call. I know the guy who picks the non odd long shot derby winners named exactly. Bobby Flay. Are we ready to make some drinks? Yeah, let's make some drinks. I'm thirsty. Let's do it. Okay, so talk to me about this. Now, I had a mint julep yesterday. How am I going to do this with, with, with a mic in my hand? It okay. was $3,500, this mint julep that I had, so no oh, the, pressure here. Yes, yeah, so, uh, okay. Because that was pretty nice. What are we doing? <sighs> okay, thank you so much. You're All welcome. Right, so I'm we a have, professional. We have, we have some crushed ice. Okay, why does it have to be crushed, Bobby? Because that's the way mint juleps are. And so it's just the way it is. Okay, so crushed ice. And then this is blackberry. It's, it's just the way it is. <laughs> just the way it is. Just go with it. Okay. So this is blackberry um, uh, juice. Who got blackberry juice? You found no, 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 blackberry no, we, juice somewhere? She made it. Damn, Marissa, that's really it's impressive. Blackberries and, it's Marissa blackberries wins. and sugar, okay? Blackberries so, and sugar. And I feel we, like this is the, the hangover level of a mojito without the payoff. It is, because taste. we have some mint as well. Yeah, it just feels like Something tells me you've had many easy. mojitos in your I, life. Bobby, you're I not I feel wrong. like I've seen you in a lot of Miami <laughs> bars. I think that was you. Oh, God. Okay. I can't then say we, anything. A little bit of mint. No, you're just throwing it in there. I'm just Sloppy. throwing it in there. And then this is some bourbon. You have This is Beat Bobby Flay with a Woodford Reserve $3,500 thing, and this is what you're doing? Hey, listen. The guy was infusing it. He was rubbing it, I massaging know. it. No. We don't need Rough that. and tumble Bobby need, Flay. We need ice, bourbon, and mint, and some blackberries. Okay. And there you go. This actually looks delicious. And do we have something else we were doing with Bobby? Some other questions? It? Yes, I do. You hold I'll this hold now. This. All right. And then no straw, no anything. Just Cheers to you. <laughs> Here's to What horse did you pick? What, the derby? No, the my, the fake derby. Oh, verifying. Ver- verifying. Ver- see, look how drunk he is. One sip and he's slurring <laughs> his words, people. And I picked two. St- Kings Barnes. Kings Barnes, very Kings nice. Kings Barnes. Uh, go check out Amalfi. Go check out Bobby's Burgers. Delicious. Best meal. What is this? Game? Oh, let's do a game. They want us to sit down and do a oh. game. Do you have a minute? Yeah. Yeah, let's just, you know, who knows what's going on. Let me try this, though. Oh, great. This will be fun. My amazing producers who you met. Who are, I mean, were you barefoot crushing blackberries for juice for this man? She was. Bobby just got it like that, huh? All right. She was, yes. <laughs> okay, but here's the deal. Somebody, somebody, maybe take this for now. Okay, we're going to play a game. I'm keeping mine. It's called, yeah, it's very smart. I'm jealous. <laughs> Yay or nay? Get it? Yes. And I, want, I really want to hear exaggerated nays. Like, okay. Nay. nay. Right. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> Here we go. You have to say if you agree or disagree. This year, your Knicks will make it to the NBA Finals. Yay. Yay. Okay, Why? They just got it going on, and they're not afraid of anybody. Are you going to be sitting next to Aaron Rodgers at one of these games? You're pulling out everybody. Turtles I'm, from Entourage I'm going, is sitting I'm going there. to game five. Okay, I'm going to game four in L.A. Hmm. I'll okay. see you. Maybe I'll see you there. Patrick Mahomes putting ketchup on steak is a great idea. Really bad idea. Nay. Nay. <laughs> Nay. Bad idea. Bad idea. Why does he do that? It's like I don't know. Good system. quarterback. Not a good eater. Yeah, not a good eater. Oh, <laughs> boy. Aaron Rodgers will lead the Jets to a Super Bowl. Nay. Why? I'm a giant fan. Oh. <laughs> Well, I didn't put a Daniel Jones question in here. That's okay. How about Forte who's going to win the Kentucky Derby? Nay. Why? I mean, he's got a good shot. He's the favorite, but I like some other horses. What are you hearing? You're hearing something about that Forte. I, I know it. You, you're Bobby. the one starting the rumors. No, no, I'm not. Yes, just, you are. I did a deep dive you on the You said dark, you were the by the water cooler and you heard all kinds yesterday. of stuff. Yes. I said water trough, Bobby. Stay a water on trough. theme. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Chef stereotypes are mostly true. Not, nay. <laughs> I don't know what they are. It depends what they are. Oh, you don't, huh? Okay, dads deserve more love on Father's Day than they get. Like, do you deserve Yay. more adoration? I mean, my daughter Sophie is very good at uh, at, at Father's Day, but I'll take a little more attention. Yeah, is she getting you a, a, a socks? Is she getting you, like, what do you get? always get men something from Sears? Like, it's not okay. Sears? No, it's not my, okay. No. She's not shopping at Sears. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Wow. Bobby's rich, everybody. You get it? Okay, uh, let's see. Victor Cruz is the NFL player who visits and bothers you about restaurant reservations the most. 
Um, you know, Victor's got some serious flavor, but uh, I would say no. Who bothers you? Who's like the NFL player that you see the most at your places or love NFL you? player? Yeah. The Mannings, of course. The man wow. Those, wow. Those, those boys, are, you know, they're Mannings around town. Yeah, they also have money. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> it. We've seen Jessica. We already did that one. Aaron Judge will be a top three all-time Yankee by the end of his career. Definitely a possibility. Hey, do you have a Bobby's Burgers at Yankee Stadium? I do. What the hell is that like? Man, your producers are really good in your ear. But you no, are... I, I... Nothing? Really? No. Yes, I was Please. just the other night. A poli- what, a, what an insult. <laughs> I'm going to go to, I'm going I was, to, I will be at Amalfi, you know, Amalfi, Amalfi, whatever, and I will say, can somebody bring me some salt, please? I need some salt yes. for this meal. Bobby. A little bland. Yeah, that's what I will do, because you just said that. Okay. Bobby Flay will win Kentucky Oaks in the next three years. Oh, that, I'll say yay for that. Yeah? Who knows? Who knows? I'd Nobody knows, and that's why you love it. Exactly. All right, now let's drink these mint juleps and say, well, who do we got? Is Aaron Rodgers coming on the program? Is he? I believe he's, I believe we're, we're efforting. Randall Cobb is definitely here. They're here together, that whole crew. And I'm going to tell him, you think he sucks, and he's not uh, going to win the Super Bowl. That's not what I said. That's not yeah. what I said. Put that I'm out there, Twitter. The Bobby Flay hates no. you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> you will never eat again in this town. All right, we'll be back after this. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Happy Derby. Thank Oops. You. Oh, they're telling us we're on the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Randall Cobb, why don't you bring us in? Tell us where we are. Uh, we are at the Kentucky Derby. Uh, today is Oaks Day. Friday, yeah. we're supposed to wear pink, but you see me. Well, we had to jet like, it up. Yeah, yeah. Let's jet be honest here. Way. You yeah. can, you could have got away with that in Green Bay, but now we have a whole <laughs> different vibe going into 2023. We were making you a drink, Bobby. Flay was here. It was a lot of fun. Love I've it. never been to the Derby. I mean, you're a University of Kentucky guy, so tell me everything I need to know. Yes. So today is Oaks Day. Um, you know, it's a, it's a special day. It's a special weekend. Uh, 149th Derby weekend. Uh I love it. This is over a decade for me. Uh, Like you said, I went to Kentucky, so I've been coming here for a long time. It's always a great weekend. A lot of fun. Parties tonight, parties tomorrow. You know, just enjoy the weekend. So are you the reason that Aaron Rodgers comes to this? No, but funny story. We actually met here. So I got drafted in 2011, right? Yeah. So I got drafted in 2011. Uh, The Barnstable Brown party is a party that's always thrown on Friday night. Yes. Derby weekend. Uh, the first time that I met him was at that party, um, and the rest is history. We've, be, we've been coming together ever since. So you met him at that party, and then what was the next time you saw him? Uh, whenever I got up there for training camp, because that was the lockout year, 2011. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have an off-season program. I got drafted. Nothing Randall, happened. that's wild. So what yeah. happened at that party? It was a good time. Yeah. A lot of memories made. I think I'm going to my first one tonight. I'm very excited. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Oh, boy. Yeah. Who's here? Yeah, there we there go. Cheers, Cheers to you. Who's Cheers. here? Tell me who's here. Aaron's here. Who else is here? Uh, we, Alan Lazard, uh, Devontae Adams, David Bakhtiari, A.J. Hawk, Jimmy Graham. Uh, we got our whole crew. Wow. Yeah. So Tay is here. Yeah. That's very interesting. Oh, yeah. Tay, Tay not on the wish list, apparently. Couldn't make it happen. <laughs> Couldn't make it I got, I got nothing to do with that. I got nothing well, to do with that. Well, you had something to do with that because you found yourself in New York. And you yeah. knew, look, just be real for a minute. Take me back to that tunnel. I don't know you were coming on the show, but when I see you, I think of you and Aaron. It's a really beautiful moment in the tunnel. I think we have it here. Yeah. Y'all are walking off. It's clear that it's over. What did you know in this moment? Um, I knew that that was going to be the last time that I was walking off of the field. I had speculation uh, just off of a conversation that I had, had with him that that could be his last time playing football and walking off that field, and it was just a moment. You know, he, he came to me before the game and was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to need you after the game. Like, because if we had won, it still would have been our last game at Lambeau because we would have been going on the road in the playoffs. So I knew that it, it was it was going to be a moment for him, and um, it, it just, you, you saw it there. It just happened. Now, you couldn't have gotten him to cut the hair back in Green Bay, but now he's cut it. He looks better than ever. Like, Aaron Rodgers literally looks better than ever what's behind that yeah i don't know but he's he's aging backwards right now yeah. uh, he definitely we me and tay were actually just talking about that a little bit we're like man he's he's happy he's in a great place uh i think this uh whole change of scenery has been great for him it's re-energized him yes that's what i, I said went up did. to the facility a couple of days ago to sign and just to see him happy and being himself in the old aaron Rodgers that that i remember um 
it, he's, he's himself again. I, I look forward to just seeing him continue to grow and, uh, and find himself. I love that. And tell me about the new facility. When you walk in, what's it like? You get there, you have obviously your boy who you know and sure. you guys take care of each other. What is what is the vibe like there with the Jets right now? Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. You can just feel the energy. As soon as I walked into the building, uh, just all the teammates. We got a really young team, but we, we have a lot of great players. We got a lot of talent. Um, and I'm just going to try to fit in and, and do my part and, and help. No, we don't want you team. to fit in. We got listen. <laughs> that's what I'm watching you in. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. Do you need a, not need a nap, babe? Like he's out every night. He's at the court side. He's doing everything. He's the living Rangers life. Do. He's living his best yeah. life, and we love that for him. Yeah. But y'all, listen. We're not we're not kids anymore, right? I'm gonna have two of these, and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna be feeling it. What are these young cats? like the Garrett Wilsons and the Sauce Gardeners. Aaron's obviously having a lot of fun with that already. What are they bringing to the table? I feel like they're going to re-energize they you guys. Are, they are special. Um, the, those, those two guys are very special. I mean, just, just watching um, G in practice, seeing the way he move. Uh, he, he reminds me a lot of Emmanuel Sanders and Devontae Adams. If you combine those two. Now, I'm not projecting him to become that because I don't know. He's got to take wow. it where he wants to take it. But I, I have a lot of faith in, in watching him grow. He set a standard for himself this past year, uh, 1,100 yards, um, you know, a few touchdowns. He's going to have opportunities. Yeah. And, and Aaron's going to get him the ball. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got a group around him that are going to help him grow uh, with me and uh, Laser, um, Laser Beam. That's Lazard. Lazard, okay. Um, Lazard's everywhere, too. Yeah, yeah. From so, Liv to Green Bay to New yeah. York, y'all. Yeah, Woo! We're, we're, we're enjoying life, you know, you trying should to be. enjoy it. You, you know, should be. It's time to. Yeah, for sure. After being in Green Bay for, for so long for Aaron, I think that he's, you know, obviously now being in the city, there's, yeah. there's a few more things for him to do. So he's just, he's taking it all Yeah, in. he's going to eat it up. I got a bone to pick with the NFL on your behalf. Ready? Uh oh I look at you and I was, you know, just thinking about you as a player right now with Aaron and Green Bay everywhere. You don't get enough credit. Like, Debo gets all the credit for playing the game the way that he does, right? At the position he does, playing as versatile as he does. But you were doing that a long time ago. And I was talking to Warren Boone, Moon, who was here, uh, here with me yesterday, about how he did. He, you know, he was ahead of his time. You were ahead of your time at your position, too. Yeah, I mean, I did a little bit of everything. You know, punt return, kick return. Yes. Uh, played in the backfield, uh, caught passes. You know, and I'm at a different stage of my career, and I know that. You know, going into year 13, I know that I'm not going to be the 150 target guy that I was at one point in my career. Uh, but I'm very efficient. You know, I, I know where I fit into the offense. I know what I can do. I know what I bring on third down and in the red zone. And I'm going to be prepared, and I'm going to get the guys around me to be prepared and, and understand what professionalism is. How do you do that? Because that's what, you know, we're talking about these young cats giving you guys some juice. Yeah. Not that you need it, but that's what they do. There's, a, there's an age gap there. It's a different generation. But what is your job in that locker room as a wide receiver of a veteran that knows Aaron, knows what he likes, knows what he doesn't want? Uh, want. I asked Gronkowski this about, you know, Brady when he went down to Tampa. What yeah. are you telling the rest of that room? Uh, well, I think the big thing is just getting them to understand how Aaron likes things, uh, getting them to understand how how Hackett expects things to be done on offense, and, and showing them what it is to be a pro, you know. And, and I think especially for, for G, like, he's already set that standard. He knows who he is and he knows what he can do, but it's about elevating his football IQ and becoming the best version that he can be. Uh, I, I got a lot of respect for the kid, and I think that he's going to be a very yeah. special player in this league for a long time. We love that. Now, Garrett Wilson didn't get the invite. <laughs> This is a, this is thing. an old it's thing. OG this was, this was the, I, I mean, think, Elizar this was is already, always this was already, hey, old, hey, don't, yeah. let's not start that. I'm don't just saying, that how thing. do you get invited? How do you get, this was, this was long before. Because you're telling me to go up, and I'll say, I'll come say no, hi when I was, don't belong. This was long, this was done uh, long before Elizar. Uh, everything that went down. You know, this was already planned out. Uh, we're already, always excited for this weekend just to get the boys back together and have a good time. I love that. What, what, give me my best piece of advice before we let you go. Best piece for handling for, this weekend. Uh, pace yourself. Really? That's what everyone's saying. Pace yourself. It's as if everyone knows a, that I'm not great at that. It's a marathon. You got to pace yourself. Okay. Have fun today. Enjoy yourself tonight. Yeah, but know it's an early start tomorrow, Y'all got here early. Hey, we're, we're, about, we're about being here for the, for the full show and experiencing the whole thing. Who all else the way is through. coming? Anybody not in your crew, NFL wise? Uh, Brady's not, I hear. I heard that uh, Pat's going to be here. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I heard that he's going to be here. I don't know. Uh, but we always look forward to seeing who, who's coming out and having a good time. I love it. I'll see you tonight then, apparently. Right, see you Cheers tonight. to you. Cheers. First drink of the day. Probably not yours, but definitely mine. We will be back right here on Up and Adams. Randall Cobb, everybody. New York Dirt. I cannot believe you're in New York Dirt. <laughs>
is such a treat. I'm standing next to one of the greatest jockeys in all of history, a three-time derby champion and Hall of Famer, John Velasquez. You're a legend. Ah, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, I know you're racing in like two minutes. What, what is going on? Yeah, just have right after this race, basically. <laughs> and you're not nervous, even just a little bit? No, I'm, don't, I've been doing this for quite a bit now, John, so I'm I was, kind of used to it. <laughs> so I work in football. There's like 17 games a year. How many times a year do you race? It's like over 500, right? Uh, yeah, the last couple of years I've been doing over 500 races, yes. Unbelievable. And you have a big one, of course, the Kentucky Derby. You will be atop and aboard reincarnate. Who's a bit of a long shot, 50 to 1 odds. We saw yeah. last year Rich Strike I don't know why he's 50 to 1 shots, though, really, because I mean, the horses who beat him in, uh, in Arkansas, you know, they didn't beat him very far, and they are like 3 to 1 and 5 to 2, and I don't know why they didn't, they're not picking my horse. But tell me why they're not picking, why they should pick your horse. We can well, change the odds right here. First of all, well, first of all it's like the, the, the first race uh, that he ran in, in Oakland, I mean, he was third in a really bad situation, and we got a ton of trolls even in the eighth bowl. And he come back and finished third. And then the last time, though, you know, he got a little bit tired. You know, we got a lot of rain in California, and you know, it was training and stopping, training and stopping. So, you know, he definitely is a legit, you know, to get tired, you know, um, wow. in that race. So, and I thought he held on pretty well for all the things he he went through uh, and through the trainings in California. So I think if he if he trained really well with good weather. Um, last three weeks in California, it should be good. Okay, I'm liking this because I, I don't, you know, Forte, I met the owner yesterday. I don't like a favorite. I like the underdog. You've got not a lot of pressure, but you're an absolute legend. So I'm trusting, you're right my horse. I'm at Piss Picka reincarnate when all is said and done here. The three horses that you rode that won the Derby, because I'm looking for which horse I want to pick, what do they all have in common, the three? Feisty. And they knew, they knew what they wanted to do, though, you know, and I want to clarify something. I think everybody thinks so I only won three, but I, I passed the wire <gasps> four times. Sorry, the derby. four so, times. You're yeah, a four-time derby Everybody's winner. Everybody's forgetting about his speed. And I know he's, he's been in big question in the sort of disqualification, but we're still in, in, in the midst of fighting that. So okay. I just want to leave that I there. I love that. Though, so with the um, four horses, feistiness yeah, is what bonds Absolutely. They, they have the heart oh. to do it. I mean, as, uh, the derby is, is a really tough race to ride and, and to run, and horses have to handle everything. You, got, you have to have the horses that are feisty and, and strong enough to, you know, to handle everything. Yeah here in the Derby Blue doing the crowd and everything else that goes on. Uh, having the horses is going to handle all of that. And I was lucky enough and blessed enough to ride those four horses um, into the winning the Kentucky Derby. Now, in football, which is where I'm working mostly, there's a thing that happens between a quarterback and his wide receiver. Something clicks. There's a moment. We can all see it, whether it's, oh, all of a sudden they have chemistry, that something happens on a touchdown, and then it builds. What is that moment between a jockey and its horse? From the moment you touch the horse, right, uh, the paddock though you know it's really? that's the connection with, with you and the horse so you have to be i mean you're the pilot of the horse basically though and you have to let it know and how we're going to get along basically though you know and, and that's the connection right there you know you as, as a as a player let's put it that yeah. way I, my, my job is to do my homework to see the, the competition to do everything else and i'm the pilot of the horse i have to guide the horse to what's the best part of the of the racetrack or the race that you know that will be better for us both for both of us yeah. you know and hopefully they all, we all connected, and we have the strength to, you know, to support. And you're selling around. me. Wow, you yeah, are yeah. really, you're a hype man for reincarnate, <laughs> and I'm very excited about it. I will say you've post position four, seven, and that's pretty lucky. Out of all of them, that is the third most derby wins. I did a little homework last night before I fell asleep. How do you feel about, and how are you attacking that I think, seven I think position? we have a really good position. That, you know, I, you know, I, I have some ideas that how I would like to ride the, hor uh, the horse and, and how the, the race is going to, uh, develop. I can't say. I mean, I'm a you day before here. Okay. Though, you know, <laughs> I can't. I can't say that. But uh, I am. I, I mean, it's no secret this is going to be in the first three or four going to the first turn, though. You know, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, I think it's a strategy that, that I could use, uh, you know, to put it in, in a good place where it'd be comfortable and be competitive. Okay. Yeah. But here's what else I have to tell you. You're not wearing green, and I'm worried. Do you know this? I'm not wearing green. You're not wearing green. Listen no. to me. <laughs> your three, three of your four Kentucky Derbies, at least, that you've won, you've had green on your silks. Oh, wow. You had green. You didn't know. Oh, no, now I'm going <laughs> to get into your head. <laughs> no. I think you need to throw like a green. Look, there's a green sticker. Something needs to be part of your. Just think about it. And you know, you know, you've I, had I'm gonna, I I'm can gonna... hop on. I, yeah, you look there great. You're great. Okay. Yeah, that, you'll be my, my, my look charm then. Yeah. Um, 
No, it's funny because my favorite colors is green and red. So now that you mentioned that, I'm going to have to put something in. I'm just saying, leave, I'm not but, seeing yeah. any green, and green seems to be your <laughs> seven's your lucky number, and green is your lucky color. Uh, what is the last thing you do before a race? I know you have to go. You're about to you're about to be in a race, which I think is crazy. Take me into the minute, the 60 seconds before it happens. Uh, I go back to my homework, basically. I go, uh, go through my homework and see all the marks that I have in the race and the competition, obviously. So I go through through the process what I like to anticipate for the race, basically. So I, I go over the race before the race runs, basically. Yeah. So that's some of my thoughts that goes in that minute uh, before I go out there. John, do you meditate at all? Why well, are I meditate? you? No, you're but so I do pray. calm. You pray. <laughs> do you yes. pray in that minute? I would. I pray that. I pray all the time, though. You know, any 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 moment that I have in Thailand, even when I'm studying, I pray it in my head. So safe trip, basically. You know, we we all pray for safety and to be, you know. Uh, to be safe and for everybody to come back uh, yeah. in one piece. John thinks you're all dumb for not picking his source more, so go do that over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And we've got a couple of races here at the Oaks, and then tomorrow we'll see if we get another Derby win for John Velasquez to make it five. That's not right. three, Thank not you. four, but yeah. five. Appreciate <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. <laughs> well, go run, run, run. I know you yeah. got to go. Bye, bye. Larry Holmes, take it away. I mean, this is beautiful Churchill Downs, Kay. Look at this place. It is absolutely fantastic. The home of the Kentucky Derby. And uh, I get to be in this room all the way up here with the best view in the house. I get to be in this room with <laughs> you, the voice of the Triple Crown, Larry Colmus. You are an absolute legend. You inherited this insane gig back in 2011. And let's start here with the room. Show us around. It's it's charming, it's quaint, and it's you and this. It's small. It's pretty much just enough room for me in here. We've got, uh, it's not completely set up yet. I'm going to have a monitor down in here. Okay. But now I've got my uh, a little iPad with uh, the horses that will be running in the different races. Uh, this is the Ali Sheba race. It's going to be tomorrow. And you see Rich Strike is in there. He won the Derby last year. He's, he did. And he is running here tomorrow. So and I'm he was a long that. shot. So I'll ask you, what was that like? And what did you learn from that experience? Because that does not happen completely unexpected <laughs> you know, you're, you're like i'm ready for anything anything i'm ready i'm like who the heck is that rich strike how could he win but are, uh, we got it in there in time are there any long shots that we will see on saturday you there's a have few. a chance there's Can a few i don't know about a chance of, okay but there are long shots and i if you had asked me if rich strike had a chance no way but he did win so they have to run the race and, we'll have to find out and that's what makes it so fun it's also the most challenging right it's the two most exciting minutes the two best minutes in all of sports and there's a lot of gravity there's what 160,000 people here then another 16 million watching <laughs> at home no what pressure is, at all right what how do you handle that how do you I, handle that i uh I sweat a lot of my palms before the races. You know, I'm like, uh, come on, let's go. It's going to be okay. I'm like totally trying to just compose myself, deep breaths. It'll be fine. And then I uh, hope it is. You hydrate, you figure it out. I mean, hydrate. listen, you're a little <laughs> bit lucky for the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown in general because it's years and years and years. Nobody wins. And then what, two of two of. Three? What were the numbers? Yeah, I've, I uh, my uh, I started calling in 2011, so the first Triple Crown winner was 2015, and I was also the announcer that day for the track at Belmont in my first year. So it worked out pretty well, American Pharaoh, and then Justify three years later. And then you had a long shot in Brit Strike just last year. Now tell me the story of this year's Derby. It's my first one. Is there a headline that I need to be paying attention to? I think for sure the headliner is Forte, uh, the horse that's owned by Mike Rapoli. My and friend. His, your buddy Mike and his partner, Vinny Viola, who owns the Florida Panthers. And they're doing real well. They just they took did. down they, the Maple Leafs. And the, they beat my Boston oh, Bruins. I know. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, that New Yorker, Rapoli, he was pretty excited about that one. <laughs> but anyway, they, uh, you know, he's the horse. He uh, he was the best horse last year, the two-year-old champion. He's come back this year. He's won two races in a row. So he's the one they have to knock off. But, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other horses with some talent in there. So we're in here. It's huge. It's bigger than I expected, to be honest. I've never been here to Churchill Downs. How do you watch the horses? How do you keep track of them as they make their way around? So I, I'll use binoculars. It's just the, the best way for me to to kind of do it my way where I'm in control of what I see. And occasionally, if I, I feel like the timing is right, I'll go to a monitor and look at the monitor. But it's a, mostly binoculars a little back and forth. We had one year, I was calling the Preakness in Baltimore, complete fog, shredded... <gasps> Every couldn't see a thing and ended up having to call the race off of 
monitor the whole time because my binoculars, as good as they are, do not see through fog. That's, I mean, and NBC <laughs> having these fog things that happened in the Falcons game once, and they used that fog cam, and they almost never looked back, so they're used to that. Shout out Fred <laughs> Gadelli and the incredible team uh, with covering this with such pedigree year in, year out. We're standing here, and I notice the finish line is right behind me. Right. It's sort of at an angle, though. The way a that little bit. Now, after, it's a little... My biggest fear in doing this is that it would be neck and neck and I wouldn't know what to say when it is. Have you had that experience? So 12 derbies, knock on wood, not yet. Oh. Not, it hasn't been too close to call, but it's always in the back of your mind, like, you know, that angle, there's a little teeny bit and uh, it bothers you because you're, you can't get a, a complete perfect look, you know? Yeah. What I learned too is most races, and you've called tons of them. 14 horses. This one's 20. How right. are you keeping track? And I asked you for a, a little bit of a cheat sheet. These are your index cards. Mm-hmm. It's like you're studying for a French final in high school. Exactly. And you're learning words and how to say au revoir and what it means. So what? how does this work? So each of these are the silks of the horses that are running in the derby. So this is disarm. Okay. That's continue R. Okay. That's Angel of Empire. Okay. Want me to keep Angel going? Empire is a favorite of Ken Rudolph over there at Uh-oh. FanDuel TV. All right, I'm gonna sh- uh, we're going to test your knowledge here a little okay. bit. How about who's this guy? Oh, that's Reincarnate. That's Reincarnate. Okay, fine. That was easy. What about this one? Lord Miles. Lord Miles. You don't need these cards. What do you, so what are you eating your Cheerios and Wheaties in the morning and practicing? <laughs> and this is the favorite I know. Yeah, that's him. That's it. This that's is Forte. Mr. Mr. Todd Fletcher's. That's course. right. Look at how much I know just being <laughs> You're here. You're on top of this. With the osmosis. Okay, so you <laughs> track it. You have your cards. What else did we want to ask you? We wanted to ask you, you could name all 20 horses. That was one of the games you wanted to do. We wanted to have a little bit of fun with you. And we have a bit of a game that my producers cooked up because of okay. course, the Derby is all about high stakes. Mm-hmm. It's all about, you know, having, the, you know, making a little fun, having a little fun over at FanDuel Sportsbook, wherever you want to, or just being a fan. I'm going to ask you five Derby related. Don't cheat, Larry. I'm going to ask you five Derby related questions. If you get three or more right, you win. Okay. And I buy you a mint julep when all this is said and done. If I, if you get three or more wrong, I win. And if I win, I get to do the famous. And the off into the actual microphone. Is that a deal? Uh, you'd have to ask NBC for that part. Now, but, uh, are we, can we do that part or no? Is that I don't even know. Can we do that part? Anyone back there, Hamilton? I don't know who produced that. Can I talk into the microphone if we win this? Oh, we can't. So we're not even. Okay. Well, then we'll, we'll just come do up it with anyway. something else. Okay, though. great. We'll come up with something else. We're going to ask you these questions. Which celebrity starred in the 2003 film Sea Biscuit? Uh, Toby Maguire. Well done. All right. Secretariat was known as Big Red. What NFL coach shares the same nickname? Ooh, Big Red. He likes mm. cheeseburgers. He just won a Super Bowl. Oh, jeez. I, I shouldn't know this one. Andrew Reed. Rhymes with Shmandy Shreed. Andy Reed. Okay. Oh, Andy Reed. Finish That's the, a loss. I should have got that one. <laughs> That's okay, because I stacked these questions against you so I could win. Finish the famous Big and Rich lyric. Save a horse. Ride a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus famously saying that they were going to take their horse down to where? Oh, I know this one. I'm forgetting. It's that. not new. It's old. Not a city, but a... Town and not a street, but a <laughs> road. There we go. Okay, well, we could really do a game night together, road. you and me. There we go. Which New England Patriot famously brought the party um, to a whole other level in the 2014 Kentucky Derby? Wes Welker. <laughs> well, well, now, Larry, you knew the answer to that one really quickly. Awfully fast. I did not participate <laughs> in any of that. You know what you did participate in? I got to ask you, were you in a Rick, Ricky Rose music <laughs> video? I was. Magnificent. Rick Ross, John Legend. Uh, I wasn't physically there. I was, uh, my voice was. They had me call a race. And by the way, they had me do a couple of things, um, kind of making fun of 50 Cent, too, when I was there. He doesn't know about it, though. Don't tell him. Okay, well, the owner of Forte is not going to like that. They did that whole vitamin water deal together. Yeah, so, but I don't think Mike knows either. He doesn't, he won't know. I won't (laughs) tell him. Larry, we're wishing you so much luck. Not that you need it. You got this thing covered. I think the lesson I learned here is the more prepared you are, the better, the better you'll feel. Sure. And you can also can't figure out what will be unexpected and you just have to deal with it in your talent absolutely and a We're great have team fun. i'm sure we have a huge uh, team at, at nbc and i've got an audio person right here and just in case things gonna fall apart but we, we should be fine nothing will fall apart enjoy the binoculars and you'll get a mint julep with me maybe after the race thank Thanks, you so Kay. much larry 
Bill is the only sportsbook app where you can bet the Kentucky Derby. Taylor, get over here right now. And right now, all customers can get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20. Listen, you can get up to $20 back if your derby win bet doesn't win. What do you have to do? You have to head over to FanDuel to get your no-sweat bet in for the Kentucky Derby. It has been an epic two hours here. Uh, yesterday and today, we are kicking it at the Kentucky Oaks, uh, and we appreciate FanDuel so much for letting us come out. This has been insane. This has been one of the coolest experiences of my life, got to oh, be honest. What am I drinking here, sous chef to Bobby Flay? Uh, a Kentucky Lily. I think it's vodka, some That's pink you're substance. You're so and cool. Lemon. Good in here. Uh, I think it's cranberry juice. Oh, yeah. Pink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've had a lot of fun. Pink. We've talked to people from all sort of scopes of the world from the play-by-play to the person who's covered it for so long and has, has does it so well in Mike uh, Tirico. We've talked to a jockey who just, by the way, he won that race. Shout out to John Velasquez. John Velasquez. Oh That's my gosh. Three, four time. Who knows? Who's counting yeah. how many derbies he's won? But now we have to make picks, guys. Yes. So Bobby Flay and I, I thought we did a good job of making picks. It's hard for me to not go with Forte, so I'm going to put $2 on Forte. But then I'm going to sprinkle another $2. I think, I think, where's the horse that I like? Hold on. Reincarnate. I'm going to go with John Velasquez because he seemed so confident, so poised. He prays before he does his thing, and I like him. And if he wears green, I'm in. I was just about to say, now that he's aware of the green thing, I think it's going to happen. Okay, make a pick. 50 to 1. Just, what do those horses be like? Yeah, I, I still, I'm still leaning Forte. I really like Forte. It was great seeing him yesterday. Hopefully it's just rumors that we're hearing. Well, I heard that Taylor was looking at him funny back there when she was taping, and he got he got all out of sorts. I knew you did that. I'm going to go with confidence game. Confidence is important. Shout out, to Ken, Ru- shout out to Ken Rudolph. Love Ken. I'm going between confidence game or um, the Japanese horse, Derma Sotorge. Pick a horse, Richard. Reincarnate his guy. Is it reincarnate? Reincarnate? Who knows? Is it a noun? Is it a verb? We don't care. Just get past the finish line. Those are the bugles. We are here for the run to... Th- to the, to the lilies? To the, to no. The, oh. A run to the lilies? The first leg of the triple tiara. I want, I want everyone to know that Richard's back there going, we start with the bugle, we end with the bugle. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to FanDuel TV for having us out. Head on over. Listen, the window's not that cool. Go to the sports book. It's easy. It's in the sports book. But we're the only people who do it, and we appreciate FanDuel for that. And let's go have some fun with the ponies. Let's go. <laughs>